You're listening to Podcast PXN, a video game podcast delivering a player experience news. Let's go. What's up, guys, and welcome to Podcast PXN, episode 258. I am one of your hosts, Daniel Prindle, aka Dan is DTM on Twitter, and I am joined over Discord. Not by the Nintendo aficionado and artist extraordinaire, Roshan Warner at Roro. He will join us maybe later. Uh, but I am joined by the host of Large Popcorn and video producer at The Gamer, Christian Macias at ISO Christian. I have big news. You want, you want, to, want me to share the big news? Yes, my frozen camera is in anticipation of that, and it just unfroze. All right, cool. <laughs> You remember, remember a couple of years ago, I think I was part of this podcast already, I had like a huge flood in my apartment basement, and um, I, had a co- I had a lot of things, a lot of uh, irreplaceable items permanently damaged due to that, remember that? Yeah, your N64, right, was one of them? No, 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 no. So I'm talking about like my yearbook and stuff like that, but my oh. PS4 was. Oh, okay. Today, after about three to four years of letting it dry keeping it in like a very like just dry like whatever place decided to turn it on we are whoa hard to see but i'm looking at the there you go pt pt baby nice i was messing around i was looking around the menus and stuff uh getting some captures over to my usb that way i can just keep them forever some video clips here and there uh it's working man so I am gonna buy a longer cable that way I can have a PS4 just available for when for whatever and whenever. Hell yeah, we love that. We love that. Am I crazy for factory resetting my PS4 and then uh, selling it, which had PT installed on it? <laughs> yes, hundred percent. That's an artifact of time. Whoops! Like that, that got taken down from storage. We'll never get, be able to play that again. Yeah, and it's gone. I did it for the money. Sorry. <laughs> Are you like, were you hurting for money at that point that you needed to sell it? Or was like a hundred bucks going to do anything for you at that point? I mean, not really. I wasn't hurting. I just used it to help me pay for the PS5. So. Never, never sell hardware. I know. I That's know. the rule. Never sell it. I made, I made mistakes, you know? I made mistakes. Anyways, we will also not be joined by Gage. He is sleeping, catching up on some Zs, but he will return as always. Thank you to everyone watching us live and participating in the chat. Just as a reminder, we are live each and every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time on YouTube.com slash at podcast PXN and Twitch.tv slash podcast PXN as well. Christian. Normally, the topic of the show this week is oh. we've been doing the topic of the show up front, but we will still be doing that. I just want to do something oh. first because of what happened this week. So, in case you haven't heard, uh, there was a really awful accident that happened. Uh, two NHL players, Matthew and Johnny Gaudreau, uh, were biking. Uh, just on the street uh they were biking uh just having a good time and unfortunately a uh under the influence person uh hit them and killed them and uh yeah absolutely awful what happened um and very tragic for the nhl uh community and um anyone who's close to, to them as of course uh their family and I uh, feel really awful for, for what happened, and that absolutely, I could not imagine uh, getting that phone call of your loved one uh, getting killed that way, and that's absolutely awful, and yeah, please do not drink and drive, that's awful. Um, but uh, <clears throat> we got some good news that um, a GoFundMe had been set up for, set up by uh Matthew's widow's sister um, and had been uh, verified by the fundraising company uh, of GoFundMe. 
and it has raised over $560,000 as of 7 p.m. on Tuesday. Um, and of course, uh, he had just had a child. Um, I'm, I'm trying to find it, but I, I'm struggling to find it right now. But he had literally just had a child, and um, of course, that child is going to need a, an entire life of care. And uh, so this is very uh, very good news in, in, in light of the bad that of course comes with this. Um, but wanted to highlight that, that, uh, that moment, uh, and hopefully, um, that helps them get through it a little bit, a little bit, uh, uh, better, uh, through a very difficult time. Um, and, uh, also just on the back of that, a, a shout out to EA for, you know, actually being good guy EA, uh, they added a, uh, Matthew and Johnny Gaudreau tribute in NHL 24, um, basically a, a big splash screen, uh, saying in loving memory of both of them. And, uh, yes, uh, rest in peace to both of them. And I hope the families, uh, can try to try to heal and get better from this. So. You know if the league did anything or if their respective teams, or I guess their team. I, I do not. I didn't see anything from the teams. I don't follow NHL too much, uh, so I didn't see what their respective teams. I'm sure that they've done something, uh, but obviously this part of it I wanted to highlight because of it being video game related. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, but. yeah. All right. Moving out of the somber here, Christian, we're going into, of course – the topic of the show and the topic of the show is well this is probably poor choice of words so i'm not <laughs> i'm gonna say the concord shutdown um has officially commenced christian and uh apparently sony is just pulling the plug here they're saying concord is being taken offline on september 6th with full refunds on the way um I thought I linked the PlayStation blog to that story, but of course I forgot to. Here we go. Uh, they posted on the PlayStation blog, Concord fans, we've been listening closely to your feedback since the launch of Concord on PlayStation 5 and PC and want to thank everyone who has joined the journey aboard the North Star. Your support and passionate community that has grown around the game has meant the world to us. However, while many qualities of the experience resonated with players, we also recognize that other aspects of the game and our initial launch didn't land the way we'd intended. Therefore, at this time, we have decided to take the game offline beginning September 6, 2024, and explore options, including those that will better reach our players. While we, while we determine the best path ahead, Concord sales will cease immediately and we will begin to offer a full refund for all gamers who have purchased the game for PS5 or PC. If you purchase the game on PS5 from the PlayStation Store or PlayStation Direct, a refund will be issued back to your original payment method. Uh, they also go on to say... If you go on other retailers, Steam, Epic Games Store, or uh, retailer stores to go to them for the refunds. Um, once refunded, players will no longer have access to the game, which obviously it being shut down, it would be meaningless to have access to it anyways. Um, but kind of crazy <laughs> to, to have this news pop up uh, literally just weeks after the game launched. Like, what, what was your uh, initial thoughts seeing that? Dude. So this happened during a work meeting. We were like at the tail end of it, and someone was like, "Hey, sorry, I I, I got distracted. Apparently, Concord is being shut down." And we all, it just all went silent. We all like checked our feeds, and it was just like all checking our our like respective like Twitters and seeing the news is fucking because unprecedented is what it is, Daniel. Unprecedented to have a game. When's the last time something crazy that, like this large scale happened like this, where something was like you know maybe Cyberpunk when that released in 2020? <laughs> Yeah, no, it wasn't even pulled from everywhere. It was only pulled from PlayStation Store, Online, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Um, there's a lot to address here, but I I, I want to put this into full context once you have like more of these little things down here. But my initial thoughts were just, uh, 
insane that they actually did this. Um, this, in my opinion, could have been addressed way before it was too late. Mm. So their comment about they want to work on what a better path ahead is or whatever, uh, I'm thinking like that could be that could mean one of two things in my eyes. One, it could mean that this game gets retold for free to play, which very well could be uh, Overwatch, of course, is free to play. Or I really don't want to say this one, but like maybe the studio fucking shuts down and Sony just cuts their losses and takes the tax write off. Like, I don't that is probably the reality and the sad reality because I don't think in our current world, even just going, just retooling that game for free to play, I, I still don't think would draw people in. Right. It's a, it's one less barrier for sure, but people were already not interested in it regardless. I don't know how much that would get people back into the Concord community just by having it go free to play uh, and then removing all the stuff to make it go, um, like insert things that will make it sustainable like battle passes or micro transactions etc um i think they would just give it just a bit more negative press to be honest like that that game needed to be retooled in in so many different ways before even going into like a public beta before even maybe the announcement but you know the news is that the game was in production for eight years eight years and and millions of dollars into something that is uninspired and already you know of a time that's that's past us um again which is the sad reality because a lot of people worked really hard on this game and that sucks but mm. i don't know man like like that game just needed some kind of juice to make it stand out and it's already oversaturated market and it just it just isn't so i don't know what they're going to do like if we see it again and it and it and like they and they have a proper plan to give it life i reckon we don't even see it for like two to three years if that's the case True. Yeah. Uh, and like, is Sony willing to give them two to three more years of development time just to make it free to play and maybe it fails again? You know? If it were Jim Ryan, Sony maybe, but he's not at the helm anymore. Right. Very interesting. Uh, so, of course, we know all this now, but even before this, this stuff came out and uh, they made this announcement, we got some reports on estimations i should say uh from uh sure. analysts out there and one analyst was saying that concord sold an estimated twenty five thousand units ten thousand on steam and fifteen thousand on playstation 5 Woo. it's not good dude no not good at all i can't even remember a game that sold that poorly that's that's insane. For what is supposed to be a like first party title for them, sure, with like mm -hmm. millions of dollars into weekly um, cinematics, they right. have like a year worth of cinematics ready to go. What happens to those, by the way? You know, That's, just, no one will ever yeah. see them. It's true. Yeah, I I think yeah we had our own doubts that that was going to continue for very long, anyways, before sure. the game came out. But yeah, yeah dude, I I have more. I have more questions like based on how much this sold here in a second. But f before we get to that, uh, also, we saw a new story today that scalpers are apparently uh, trying to upsell Concord on uh, eBay and, and places like that for double or even triple its retail price for a physical copy. Uh, that's insane. Like, I guess anytime something like this, you know, Obviously, this hasn't happened before, but they're pulling it from shelves, so I guess it makes it, in turn, a rarity, I guess, if people start returning these. An artifact, if you will. There's also the mm. controller, too. That's true. Yeah, that is true. Kind of, yeah. Those, yeah. Those things are collector's items, I guess, so to speak, though. Yeah. I guess just for the irony of it all, I don't know if, you know... <laughs> It's not like anything that's like a, like a hot collector's item, you know, like the like the Metal Gear Solid Five PS4 or something. Yeah. Um, I I wrote something down here. Have you seen what the current player base is like for two <laughs> days in a row now? I did see the, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, for those, for full context, is that um, obviously that game has trophies, and people are trying to get the platinum before the servers go down this Saturday. The what? The sixth, I guess. Right. Yeah. Yep. The seventh. Excuse me. The seventh. I think it's the uh, sixth. So, yeah. Fri- oh, Friday. Friday. That, yeah. Okay. Uh, so players are going into that like main game mode, the round based game mode, um, and then. Sorry, I got a text from from Harley about Black Myth Wukong. Uh, and then quickly playing the game of who can kill themselves the fastest. The teams are just jumping off the the map because uh, it's the fastest way to get XP. And one of the one of the trophies is to get like the max level or something. Um, so the full matches are just people just kill. you can't even play the game regular anymore. That's, people are just killing themselves. Why? Do, number one, why are you getting XP for killing yourself? What the fuck is that? I think it's per round. I guess it's the people who are like winning. I guess like that round. Huh. I'm not sure on the on, on the system of how that works, but I have seen people who like did play the game asking like, "Can we just get like a triple XP until <laughs> uh, until servers go down for people who actually want to play the game?" Right. But that's insane. So, <clears throat> I guess to kind of circle back for a second, this game only sold reportedly, according to the you know, analysts, 25,000 copies. So, like, why did this game not sell, do we think? Like, the game is very... It's in an interesting position, again, because it's very much like what we talked about last week with Star Wars Outlaws being a 7 out of 10. Like, this game is pretty close to that, actually. I think it was... Last I looked, it was like a 65 or 66, which is not, you know... It's like eight points behind Star Wars Outlaws or something like that. So it's like a, it's another like it's an, a good, maybe not quite good game, um, average game, whatever you want to call it. So like, why did this game sell so poorly? Like, is my so question. Things, so many things. Where, where, should, yes. where to begin? Where, where should we start? Begin? Where to begin? <laughs> uh, like. What 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 what's one quality that that you think that uh, that caused it? Okay, if you remember the first state of play from I guess was it this year or maybe late last year, there was that cool cinematic. I I said cool, but um, it didn't really grab me. But people were interested because it seemed like at least these these like characters are like stylized characters with like uh you know if they're gonna do cinematics like that that's interesting. This is the live service game. Oh, what is it? And then they immediately switched to Concord as a 5v5 PvP game. And that that was where a lot of people ch- uh, checked out. Because not a lot of people are interested in that. Because they already have their PvP games. They have their Valorants. They have their uh, CSGOs. Their Fortnites. I'll say Overwatch too, but like, you know, that community has its own issues with, with, um, with Blizzard. Um, having a new one in that space that just seemed to be something that was trying too hard to be in while not having a uniqueness or a charm that like you really need to break into that space was like already one of the first major killing blows. The second for me, I think was having the beta released so soon to launch given it's $40 price tag for me. I would want to give my team as much time as I would want to do play tests for at least like half a year to a year to get some kind of word of mouth going before even releasing the thing because there was no word of mouth to begin with right uh, and then have community feedback kind of dictate what the game shapes out to be for full launch right that beta was like weeks before the full full game and they took in to account maybe a fraction of what the community feedback was and it's like okay if you're not listening to the full feedback or don't have time to like change or implement all the changes then like you're already going to be like uh, on the back foot when you're releasing this game. So it's like a number of things, dude. And I think I think it really does, goes back to uh, the fact that the game started eight development eight years ago after after the release of the first Overwatch. Like it was already chasing a trend. Sure. Almost a full decade went by, and like there was nothing there that differentiated itself, other than some of the cool maybe like the systems for PvP. But like again. You got to bring in people a different way. And I, I think I shared with you guys in that, that Twitter post that I found of people talking about the, like, 
animated videos that are inside the game where like they're like uh, 2D animations. And those characters look, it's the same, they look, they look the same, like they're wearing the same outfits and stuff, but they look like they fit that world way better than having the like realism mm -hmm. aspect of that place. Like, I just wonder like if, if these couple of changes all together, maybe you could have had something that maybe not, not succeeded, succeeded, but succeeded enough to have legs for it to evolve over time. That's what I think. Yeah, I think <clears throat> I think that's totally fair. I think I think those are all I think those are all reasons why this game isn't a great game. But like I still struggle sure. to, to understand why it didn't sell well. Like I feel like those are correlations. Obviously, it's not going to sell as well if people aren't as hyped for it and such. But like personally, I saw zero marketing from Sony on this game. Like I understand, you know, 100%. There's a lot of problems with this game that people have with it. But also, like, you're p putting a game out there that is supposed to be one of your tentpole, uh, you know, live service games. And I personally did not see any advertisements. And I'm often at the, the I'm the target dem demographic. Like, I should be seeing all kinds of advertisements for this game and people and you know play the beta and all of this and i feel like i never saw that from this game at all uh but like also at the same time i do think it's interesting tom warren posted something on twitter that i i thought was actually it made sense to me as well he said concord was worse than bad it was forgettable and that's exactly right. what you were saying it didn't have an identity which that's a really great point if, if you don't have something unique then people are going to forget about you you know we talk about uh the golem game that came out last year that game had more players playing it concurrently than concord and that game was that was awful game like it's not even close mm -hmm. between it and concord which is the better game um which is why it's so fascinating right like you know sales and you know quality of the game are definitely tied together but not necessarily contingent on one another i feel yeah. like say what you will about you know the current state of hell divers that game also got like very minimal marketing it was at a couple True. of state of plays and such um but like larger marketing for like a what i'd call a traditional first party game maybe not quite the same to the, to the same levels but i mean that game already had like an audience True. Uh, based on its niche original title. Um, and, but more importantly, had an identity. And despite not having a beta, when people first played the game, word of mouth spread like crazy because the gameplay was fun, right? True. Um, that new Valve game, <laughs> which was like a, a <laughs> hidden secret for so long, man. Like that game has a strong identity for, for uh, like as a MOBA. That's why it has like almost a hundred thousand players in its, in its, uh, play test right now. Um, Spectre Divide, even though maybe that one won't succeed. It's a, uh, who's Shroud's new game? Oh. Like, is doing something interesting with the genre by having one player control two characters on the map. That's interesting and a new way to play it, right? So all these things, all, all these different titles, have something to them that make it memorable, make it stand out. And like you and Tom Warren are saying, Concord really didn't have any of that. For sure. And I, pl I played the thing. Like I thought, like, I thought the gameplay was solid. I played it for like three and a half hours. Like it was cool. I enjoyed my time with it. I never felt like I'm going back though, or much less spend forty dollars on it. Yeah, and there's there's definitely people that have enjoyed it. Like uh, someone's in the YouTube chat, Paula Mute, that said, "Except the game is great. I hope it comes back soon." And that's fair. I'm that's not fair. Gonna, yeah, I'm not going to criticize uh, your your take on it. And if you enjoyed the game. I think it's gonna be it's gonna definitely be interesting to see what happens when it comes back and uh I really hope it does come back and comes back stronger from it. I just hope that Sony doesn't, you know, just take the easy out and uh and just shut down the we've had so many layoffs already this year. Uh, we don't need to see more, I hope. Sure, yeah. But also I I think I made a mistake in our private chat. Um Mentioning that Sony acquired Fire Sprite. I think this team is Fire Walk. Yes. Uh, is that right? Yeah. Fire I don't know if Sony owns them. I, 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 I guess they do, right? If 
I know they funded. I helped. They helped fund that's, the game. That's a good point. Uh, did they? Let's find out. Does Sony own Fire Walk, not Fire Sprite? Yes, they do own Fire Walk. Since 2023, they purchased okay. them. Oof. Only a year of financial backing. This this is why like I push back a little bit with um, our our conversation. We're like, you know, Sony not supporting them. Like this mm. is a year out of a full eight. Right. And this uh, I think a lot of it can fall on some of the, on on the developers. But I I will say like I don't know Sony. I think after acquiring them would one would hope be in that position to be like this isn't shaping out to be quite ready yet. Let's let's pull back and 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 launch it when it is ready and have numerous play tests go out to like. Again, help it find its final form. Sorry, I, inter I interrupted you. No, 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 you're fine. Uh, I'm just confused because I thought this game was also in development for eight years, but but this is saying that they they were formed in 2018. So that's weird. I can't. Well, okay, is that true? Yeah, this is on their website that they were formed in 2018. I recall uh, articles. There was it either Paul Tassi, maybe, or Gene Park sharing stuff about right. how it was in development since 2016. That's what I thought as well. But uh, unless something else happened, they they were formed in 2018. So I don't know. That's weird. I don't know. I saw the same things you saw. So I that that is weird. Um. But alas, regardless of that, this is their first video game that they've ever made as a studio. So, like, sure. obviously, there's some trials and tribulations that come from that as well. Um, but you got to feel for the devs, man. Absolutely, yeah. Definitely sucks to see that. But I don't know, Concord, Concord. When when it when will it return? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. All right, Christian. Are we I did see oh, sorry. Uh, uh, What was the fucking tweet, man? It was so funny. Um not not that it's something to like laugh at. The situation's awful, but you know, you you take news how you take news and a lot a lot of my feet is sometimes like Making jokes about it. I saw a tweet that was like, uh, "The Last of Us uh, was shut down so that Concord can be shut down." Oh God! Uh, but in this, oh, uh, there's a there's a second article I think today from Paul Tassi. Hmm. Uh, I think he wrote an article for Forbes that was titled like, um, uh, "Now like the the eyes are on uh, both Fair Games and Marathon." Uh, I think both both of them should be a little bit worried. Okay, worried isn't the right word, but like there is going to be a little bit of anxiety for both those teams. Right. Um, Bungie's been have been having a lot of issues at their company, uh, and then Fair Games. Like if if that game comes out and is like not as inspired either, and not as not as memorable, not as able to to draw eyes to it, then you know uh, Sony's live service initiative it could be in some hot water. That's so wild for you to say, too, because, like, if Bungie makes Marathon and it's not, like, a great game, they might be fucked. <laughs> they could be. Yeah, sure. Man, that's... They're already en route to, like, right. be acquired, right? They can't afford mistakes like that. Yeah, that's crazy. There was there was a developer though who um a game designer at Marathon who quote tweeted Paul Tassi's uh article link and was like just let me just let me work in peace, which is also fair. Like you don't want to be looking at all that shit. That can't be good for you as a, like as a developer. For um, sure. To have your mental state just be dictated by just all the shitty news in the industry constantly. For sure. Alas. I do want Marathon to be good, man. I do too. I do too. I fucking love the vibe of the original teaser trailer. Teaser, sure. Yeah, but yeah, I'm with you. Of course, a lot of changes since then. Uh, well, 
the yeah. game director who was a piece of shit apparently. <laughs> so yeah, and we we mentioned that what that that teaser was twenty twenty two. 2023 point, right? it was 23 okay okay not that that long ago then yeah may may of 23 so yeah a year, a year ago a year and some change yeah yeah it's already september it is fucking insane dude insane two months ago was 250 Stop. <laughs> take me back oh actually can i mention something real quick yeah well sure I had a I had a buddy who was talking to me to, talking to me today about how he was he was just in Cincinnati like last week or something like that or two weeks ago. What the fuck? And he kept talking about he kept talking about like, oh like dude, he's like oh, you've been you've been like have you have you had uh, Cincinnati chili before like have you had Coney's? <laughs> you and I was like yeah I have and he's like aren't they so good and I was like eh, all right. <laughs> he was devastated. He was devastated. He loves Coney's. He loves me too. Cincinnati chili. He grew up with Cincinnati chili. I was like okay, there's, I, I know I get it. Hell yeah! Was, I, know, I know. Did he grow up in this area, or I don't know. I, oh. I, I he's in Chicago, so I imagine he grew up near there. Gotcha. That's cool. Shout out to him, the real G. <laughs> All right, let's move into the quick bites. Wait, or the news of the week? I forget how this works. So we go in the news. <laughs> Do we go in the news news of the week? Let's go into the news of the week, Christian. The first news of the week item I have here. I thought it would be interesting for us to do a little look ahead at 2K's upcoming 2025 game lineup as it stands right now because it seems like they got a pretty wow. stacked lineup for 2025. So starting off in February, we have Civilization 7 that release, releases. And then we have supposedly by the end of March, we have Judas, which is Ken Levine's next game. I've been very excited for that. Um, I don't believe it. You don't? Yeah, I don't, I don't think so either. We haven't really seen like, anything from it yet. This year, maybe late spring is when people went to go see it. And like that wasn't even like a... Right an alpha build of that game or whatever it was like a like a slice yeah i think you're right i think they i think they will put a 2025 release on it but i think it'll get delayed to 2026 Flip. yeah sure 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 but as it stands now that's what it's at uh right. wwe i don't really give a shit about that that comes out every year uh borderlands 4 coming calendar 2025 so sometime in 2025 do you believe that one I find it hard to believe if it's in the fall because Grand Theft Auto releases in the fall. I find it hard to believe they're going to put two of their big IPs against one another. So sure. I find it I find it very unlikely. I think that's going to get pushed to 26 as well. Okay. But uh, we also have Mafia 4, The Old Country, which was just announced, and that is supposed to come out calendar 2025 as well which again another situation where if it doesn't come out before summer of next year i don't know if that's coming out next year um which i think we'll know more in december on that game because i think they're supposed to show gameplay in december for that game so maybe they announce like a you know, April or May release date or something after they show gameplay in December, if it's that far along. Um, and then yeah, that mo oh, if sorry. Mo sorry, and then and then and then of course the big one, Grand Theft Auto Six, is coming in fall twenty twenty five. Big if true, big if true, I believe it. Why not? Yeah. I think. Um, Unless it gets delayed, <laughs> yeah. Because I has can see like ha half of this lineup being delayed, right? It making sense, but I can also see like uh, maybe like one or two of these hitting. Like if 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 Mafia is probably the moment that's most likely. Yeah, I could see Mafia hitting uh, some kind of nice, nice fall date, a um, couple of weeks early before even a GTA Six if that hits its week and and not, not have it not be an issue. True. If there's one game from this list that's not Grand Theft Auto 6, which one are you most excited for? Judas. Uh, I, I think uh, the way that game treats its AI 
uh, I thought was really fascinating. Um, I listened to that that F, was it uh, Friends per Second podcast mm-hmm. uh, interview with Ken Levine, uh, and then their their discussion after the fact where they just kind of unpacked everything they played, and uh, th- that game is fascinating. Um, the procedural stuff in it as well is is something that's kind of exciting, even though I'm not super super huge on procedural. Um, the fact that like the narrative is responsive in real time to the decisions you're making, I think is also pretty interesting. I think the ways they're trying to maximize emergent both gameplay and narrative is what's going to make this so fascinating. Like, could be a, a game that is like not genre bending, but like pushing the medium into some some interesting uh, formats that I think really speaks to me. Uh, yeah, I, I think Judas. Yeah, I'm 100% with you because like the all like you were saying all the procedural stuff that Ken was talking about, it it sounds like what Bethesda wanted to do with Starfield but then like ultimately failed on in my opinion. Uh they didn't make it unique. It didn't feel uh unique every time you played it whereas like the way Ken was talking about the world bending to you like it's there's a lot of systems in there that sounded very fascinating and obviously they've been working on this game for fuck uh 10 years almost uh or maybe more than 10 years because bioshock infinite came out in 2013 yeah. that was the last one and game. a half concords yeah <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> uh so yeah it's gonna be interesting and obviously i think I think a lot of the the decisions for the releases for many of these games is going to be what is happening with Grand Theft Auto 6. Is it going to stick to sure. fall of 2025? It's, yeah. Are you playing GTA 6? you going to buy it? Absolutely. Yeah. Fucking GTA 5 is one of my favorite games of all time. Does it launch with online? I think so, yeah. I think it has to, right? You think? I think it has to, right? Because... I don't think it has to do... It. I don't think it has to at all. I don't... Okay, sorry. Has to is a poor choice of words, but, like, I feel like GTA Five. they... It was, like, a month, right? A month later that they were going to release online, but then it was, like, broken. Uh, it was, like, really broken at launch, and then it really didn't get squared away for, for a for minute. Like, months. Yeah, yeah. for a yeah. hot minute. Um. So I feel like I feel like they've got to be like in their minds like we want to have this ready to go at launch. We got to have our microtransactions ready to go at launch because like that's the other thing. Like once as soon as GTA 6 comes out, I feel like the GTA 5 population is going to plummet. Uh because like all those online players are going to want somewhere else to go and sure. 2K is going to want their money, so like they're going to they're going to be putting pressure on Rockstar to say, you got to have all of your ducks in a row here. We've got to continue that monetization that you created with GTA five and keep bringing in the cash cows. <laughs> I hope. I, from my understanding, from what I've read, this is, this is uh, maybe street meat territory, but Plans for DLC for Red Dead Redemption 2 were shelved so that they could go all hands for GTA 6. That says to me maybe there's a likelihood that they all they had you know the the man power to to have online uh, function functional at, at launch. But to me, I hope the narrative of GTA 6 is something that is like truly compelling. Oh, yeah. I thought GTA 5 is okay, um, but that they also could, like it's going to be a game that is in the zeitgeist for like a decade, I'd imagine. I hope they do cool stuff with like DLC for this game as well. That's my hopes. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. And GTA has been known for very good DLC. So hopefully they continue that. But obviously, like you said, they canceled Red Dead 2 DLC. And Red Dead 1 had one of the best expansions of all time with Undead Nightmare. Undead Nightmare? Yeah. yeah. So I guess who knows? Um, man, that story. See, you say you say GTA Five story was okay. I feel like they did a, a really good job. Granted, there were a lot of like really cheesy parts and tropes and everything like that, but like I feel like they I did a, a yeah, they did a pretty good job with having three completely different protagonists. Like, I don't know. That's a no, difficult. No, yeah, I, I agree. But like, uh, sorry, 
uh, it did not resonate with me the way, especially the Red Dead games do, but uh, other Sorry. Grand Theft Auto games resonate with me a bit more in terms of their story. Um, totally fair. GT fives, yeah. I enjoyed the lead up to the first heist. Yeah. In GTA Five. That was that was sick. The the snow sequence was that, or was it? Oh, that's that's the uh, the prologue. Oh, okay. Um, I'm talking about like the first heist should be the bank, the first bank robbery. Got it. For sure. All right. Well, that's that's our look ahead. Little brief look ahead at uh, 2K's games for next year. But now we're moving on to the other news of the week item, which is our Black Ops 6 beta impressions. Christian, we've both played it. What are our thoughts? Yeah, can, can, how, do, do you know how long? Oh, what the heck? What happened? Uh, speaking of GTA 6, I went to go look something up, and I, the first tweet that I see on my timeline is, Sony has locked down GTA 6 marketing rights, insiders say. Game will supposedly be marketed with PS5 and PS5 Pro branding. I forgot that I forgot the Pro was going to be a thing. Interesting. Um, sorry. Uh, I wanted to ask if you remember how much of the beta you played. Uh, yes. If, if not, if not by hours or whatever, then by at least like, um, what rank are you before you? Or did you like reach the max level or of the beta so far, et cetera, et cetera? I can tell you the exact amount I played because I tweeted at Call of Duty to get my COD beta record, they send you a screenshot of all your stats. What? Yeah. You, what the heck? you send them a, uh, a an at and put your Activision ID and then hashtag COD beta record and they spit out an image with your stats on it. It's pretty cool. Um, um, let, me, let me go to DTM. Yeah, go to my DTM replies. Player. Go to my replies and you'll see. You just need your Activision ID. Uh... So I've played two hours and 39 minutes of Black Ops 6. I've played, I played 18 matches, uh, 1.16 limb slash death ratio. That's okay. Not great. And seven wins. We're getting older. We're getting older. We're getting older. We're getting... <laughs> yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm still in my prime in Halo. It's just, you know, I haven't played COD in so long. It's, you know, I'm rusty. On Highly COD. different. Yes play style absolutely very different um so i'll start with my thoughts while you're looking into that uh my thoughts are largely positive surprisingly because i mean normally i am not huge into the cod multiplayers anymore especially lately um the cod multiplayers are kind of you know every year it's kind of very samey to me and i just i don't get too excited about it but I think this one has me very interested just because there's certain elements that make it feel like a more refined experience. Like for instance, I actually find the Omni movement to actually be very additive to the gameplay. I understand like it can, it can probably be too much for some people, but like for me, it feels really good. Like even the animations going in and out of all of the different, variety of ways to to uh, perform your omni movement like dives and everything it just feels really fluid to me and i really like that actually um and i think the other thing is is which i said when i was playing with uh gage and i can't remember who i don't i don't think you were in there with us yet when i said this but uh but i said that like I like these long, a bit longer kill times because like this, apparently this game mimics very similarly to Modern Warfare 2's gameplay um, in terms of time of death or time to kill, sorry. Um, and that's the ones that I find more enjoyable. I enjoyed Modern Warfare 2's um, extraction mode with Gage. I played that uh, a bunch with him. Uh, Modern Warfare 3, I didn't play at all, which apparently it had longer kill times, but I didn't play it because I wasn't going to fucking buy that. Uh, yeah, fair. But yeah, I, overall, uh, I'm very positive on uh, on the the multiplayer thus far. Here we go. 
tweeting at them right now cod beta record i don't know how long it took for you to spit out it's very quick so it should come back pretty much instantly um but yeah i yeah i don't know i got it oh i got it i got it you said you played two hours 18 minutes two hours 39 minutes okay i'm an hour behind you at one hour 18 sorry one hour 17 nine games 197 limbs uh, 1.31 uh, KD, KD, three wins. My win loss is 1.5. Uh, uh, accuracy is 22%. Highest streak was eight. Hell yeah. Man, let me go see your. Let me go see yours. Your shit. Hell yeah. I want to. I want to see your. Uh, your kill streak here. It is ten. Ah oh, fuck you. <laughs> I was on a. I remember that one too. I was on a fucking tear. I was literally losing my shit in in the chat because. Uh, oh, that was the one I got my chopper. Yeah, because I was literally losing my shit. I was like, Gage, I need a fucking. Sh- I need one kill for a chopper. I need. I need to just camp this corner. I literally camped the corner to get the last one because I'm like, I ain't. I ain't. I ain't risking it. Uh, I had some good plays, and during my sessions, I got uh, play the game. I think twice. Oh. Um, some cool moments uh i've only played an hour and some change um so make that what you will i'm planning on buying i'm not buying excuse me playing uh weekend two uh with some more friends um i'm in a weird spot where i think i think it's fun um and i'm having a good time just shooting the shit while i'm playing it i actually kind of enjoy some of the newer game modes that like uh Mm -hmm. H what what was that game mode with the where you have like a like a POI? Oh yeah, like, like a VIP, VIP in your group. Yeah, I can't. I, remember I forget what, what it's called. called. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one was pretty fun, although pretty hard if your team doesn't have any sort. Of, like, I would like to play that with a full stack. I think that game would be a lot of fun with a full stack, where people are actually talking and not Gage just telling people to come with me. And it's just like, <laughs> what are you doing? Where are you going? You're the fucking you're the VIP. Don't yeah. leave this. I'm defending you, but. Um, <laughs> I'm in a weird spot with the Omni movement where I think it's fun, leads to some cool moments. I think it feels good a lot of the times. I don't like the way the maps are designed in that game. I don't feel like they use the new mechanics to their full potential. Uh, and I think that is my biggest complaint that, you know, when I think of other FPS games, it like already established in the genre, like Titanfall, obviously, way ahead of its time. Apex, though. Maps designed for movement of their kind. Fortnite redesigned their maps to accommodate, you know, um, their mantles, their their sprints, their slides. This feels like you could place this into Modern Warfare Three without any of the shit, and it would play just fine. Any of the Modern War- or the new age Call of Duties, and it'd just be just fine. They're not really full, fully utilizing what Omni movement can. Even like Black Ops Three, uh, where that had like this that skate park uh map and then that like redwoods map where you could you know run on the walls like on the outskirts to get like a flank the map design in this is pretty good so far from one of the like the three maps that i played i actually really enjoy that like uh that parking lot uh what do you call it like um outlet shopping center yep. that one was pretty fun i like the long range uh long range encounters on that map but again not a lot of places for me to fully utilize slides and uh dives in any interesting ways aside from the map with like the that's a, with the this is it the hotel maybe with the pool oh, yeah. cool moments there for sure but yeah nothing nothing too memorable uh and then it's very sad i think for me the state of fps is is more sad the way i look at clips from the game where people are min maxing movement to the extent that they are where like you get clips of people doing high twitch shit and now you're having conversations about like is the era of the casual dead um did twitch kill the casual and so my answer is like not really uh you know accounts like machinima on youtube for the longest time you know we're doing clips of the week and and cool play and people were always trying to get to get good but yeah i i do think maybe twitch and and that COVID era of streaming kind of exacerbated what the cod community looks like now uh yeah so that that's my take is that i'm having fun playing the game Maybe it's because of because uh, the, the shooting is solid and I'm having fun with my friends, but I, I think there's still some work to be done. I don't think it's as realized as I would would have wanted it to be. 
given it's only a beta. There's still plenty of time. Um, I did bring up some changes that they're, they're implementing for Weekend 2 if you want to hear them. Sure, yeah. Level cap raised to 30. Weapon balancing. I'm not sure what that's going to be like. Um, I'm sure it's some TTK stuff or uh, distance engagements, what have you. Spawn tuning, which is huge. There's a lot of yes. points where I'd see someone pretty... Yeah, yeah. Huh? Uh, increased weapon XP earn rate. Uh, audio improvements, which is huge. That game is, is loaded with bugs. And then bug fixes plus more, which I think is also big. Because uh, if I have any other complaint, it's that uh, I would love for these Call of Duty games to exist on their own applications and and not within COD HQ anymore. Because I yeah. think that also has a lot, causes a lot of issues on the back end when you're going through menus and shit. Yeah. I think... Um... I think another problem that Gage had echoed this as well, that I feel like the exteriors of a lot of the maps don't really have a lot of personality, but then the interiors did. So like, um, like you were talking about the, um, the retail spaces. Like I feel like the outside looks like, so many other call of duty maps that we've had before but like the interiors i thought were actually pretty you know pretty unique like a lot of colors and a lot of cool things to look at and like obviously you're playing a first person shooter like you, you don't necessarily need to look at all these things and make them look good but like i feel like that's part of what makes map identities unique is by having some cool feature that like you see on the outside that you're like, man, that's, that's awesome. Like, you know, from modern warfare Two, there are so many unique attributes about those maps or, or even the original modern warfare. Sure. Like, yeah. 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 Um, like shipment, obviously you have a bunch of crates, uh, or you have, um, a crash with the helicopter crashed in the middle of the map, like things like that, that make the map unique is, I feel like what these maps yeah. are missing. I mean that's like you know all the all the all the devs the original devs from like the the hate you know those great days of modern warfare and 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 the early black ops like they're all gone now like map map yeah. design is so much different because I'm with you like even you know I think of like black I think was it black ops two even has like the hijack map that is the, yeah. the boat right I think it's a great map um, you're right there's a lot of early on you can see like distinctions between different maps and they all ha incorporate like their own areas in unique ways like, it's great shout out to shipment that's people didn't like that map when it came out but like <laughs> i still i no excuse me not shipment um you're talking about wet work uh maybe i mistook you maybe you oh, were talking about shipment and i, and I thought about wet work I, I was talking about shipment but yes wet work i remember as well i <laughs> liked wet work nobody liked wet work but um yeah. I get what you're saying. That there's like distinction between the maps, and it, like you, it makes you play a bit differently. It makes you interact with the space in, in unique ways. The original Black Ops, I, I love what they did with um, having interactable things, which I, I enjoyed for this one too. In the beta, there's that map where you can make the bookshelf slide, and you have the the hidden area that goes underground. That's that's that stuff is cool. But I, I you're right. I, I could call it for you engaged. Yeah, some of the map design, maybe a little bit uh, uninspired when compared to the better Call of Duties of the past. But again, maybe some of the other maps in the full release will be, will change our minds. True. Very true. All right. Let's move over into some quick bites, Christian. Uh, we're back on the Xbox Series S train here. <laughs> I feel like we talk about it every week, um, developers talking about the issues developing for it. But before we get to those, there is some clarification regarding Black Myth Wukong on Xbox, uh, which previously some people were thinking were was a technical issue with Series S. Apparently, Paul Tassi tweeted, a source with knowledge of the situation has told me that Black Myth Wukong is not currently on Xbox because of an exclusivity deal, and it is not delayed because of any sort of technical issue, which is interesting because we've heard, we heard Microsoft essentially ins ins insinuate that um, when they made a statement, and then Game Science, the developers, were making it sound like it was an optimization problem. Um, so it is interesting to get clarity that it actually is an exclusivity deal um, by Sony, apparently. But we do have some problems. But, Sorry. 
which I'm inclined to believe, but I, I also th- is it's so frustrating to hear hearsays left and right now, where like even though they're both confirmed, you're hearing confirmed from both sides now, where it's like, yeah, well, some of the devs are saying, some of the developers are saying this, some of the uh, Xbox people are saying this, Sony's not commenting. It would be nice to get some clarification from, yes. like, you know what I mean? It, and, like, shit like that, I don't understand why it's not more transparent. Like, of all the things for the FCC to get involved in, like, I don't understand why they wouldn't get involved in making things transparent for for consumers when, when sure. there's exclusivity deals like that because streamers do the same thing when they have deals with publishers or games they have to disclose that so like yeah. i feel like that should be disclosed but i agree i agree all right uh this is crazy though this this is nuts the yeah. second here <laughs> yes so then we got some news uh about uh enotria i hope i said that name correctly the last song which got a delay on xbox uh this is coming from their twitter account they say we believe that xbox is blessed with a huge gaming community and we would love to release enotria on your platform as fast as possible as we spent a lot of money and resources to make it happen but this task is nearly impossible with Microsoft taking months to reply to us when we have the game ready for submission. If you'd like to help, please let Xbox know about our situation. If we had a dedicated Xbox account manager help us out, this issue would not exist. Thank you so much. Which I also did some digging and found that apparently to even get to the point of being able to develop on Xbox they had to make an uh, they had to make a similar plea to gamers to reach out to Microsoft to get them to pay attention to where they finally got someone from Microsoft to reach out to them for them to develop on Series S and X. And now that they've put all that money and effort into making Series S and X versions, they can't get all of them again. Which is that's insane, dude. Like, come on, what are you doing? I Microsoft? did see I did see Phil uh, responded. And that they updated their thing. I think was it today, this morning? Oh, I didn't Maybe see yesterday. That. Yeah, yeah, this morning, as of today, uh, uh, Phil got them the help they need so that they can work on on finalizing the work they need for Xbox, which That's is huge. Good. But very unfortunate that it, that there there are so many road roadblocks for them, and uh, yeah. assuming other developers as well. Yeah, it's like the CEO of Microsoft sh- Gaming shouldn't have to fucking step in. You sh- there should be somebody in place to handle this. Like, why is this not? Sure. That's crazy. Sure. That is good news, though. I'm glad that they got squared away. Uh, Dune Awakening apparently is getting some Series S issues. Uh, Funcom, who is the developer, says that... Uh, developing Dune Awakening on Xbox Series S will be a challenge. It's one of the reasons we're coming out on PC first. There's a lot of optimizations we need to do before we release on Xbox. But yeah, Series S is a challenge. Another Dune Awakening was the developer where uh, he misspoke and said 25 frames per second. It meant 35? Or was that for Avowed? Uh... I don't know. Uh, did, did, I, I didn't hear about this. 25 versus 35 frames per second? Yeah, there was a game coming to Series S where a developer at Gamescon said that um, the game was at run, currently running at 25 frames per second, oh. and they misspoke, and they meant 35. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. Which, I mean, if the game is running at 30, 30 frames per second on Series S, so be it. Fucking just release it at 30. You know, I, I understand if your vision is something greater, you know. Sorry, go ahead. Found it. It was the Stalker. It was Stalker 2. Okay, Stalker 2. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. 30 fine for a Series S. Right. fine. Yeah. I mean, it's a cheaper console. People know that they're not going to have as high quality of an experience. That's what the Series X is for. I, yeah. Microsoft's policies of making sure they're feature parity, I, I don't think that that works. I think every, I think both platforms need to take, need to leverage the, the platform that, that's in front of them. You can't force, um, force it on upon them. And then, that's not all. 
Jez Gordon uh, posts uh, here, breaking Capcom solves the technical hurdles preventing Marvel versus Capcom and Capcom fighting game two collections from hitting Xbox. Both will arrive in 2025. So obviously they notoriously had issues and now they are finally releasing. So good news on that front. Good, good, good. Enough Series S news we'll move on to control 2 has uh, officially been been unveiled to be self-published by remedy themselves and they are, they will be partnering with annapurna interactive as well to bring control and alan wake to film and television which is very fascinating um the kind of crazy stories that they get, that sam lake comes up with with remedy i'm very interested to see what that uh that turns into on the on the television and film front. I wish those games were profitable, but even though it's they're true. not, I'm glad that they're still uh, making these games in general, mm. and that they're ha- they're finding deals to get these made. And that's awesome for Annapurna to step in, like f- help fund. Um, yeah, but they can still self-publish, and they just have the rights to do stuff for TV and movies, which I'm excited about. For sure. Yeah, and I think Remedy is like one of the best independent developers out there still. Like I feel like they very much value their independent uh nature of a of a studio and I hope that they are able to continue to operate that way and uh don't get forced into a uh a buyout situation or something like that. Mhm. All right. Moving on, we are going back down the path of sadness because Rocksteady has officially been hit by some layoffs. Uh, This comes by way of Eurogamer. Eurogamer didn't cause the layoffs. They're reporting it. Uh, (laughs) I just want to clarify that. I don't know why I needed to clarify that. The company's QA department has seen its size almost cut in half over the past month. Eurogamer understands from 33 team members to 15 with poor sales of Suicide Squad directly cited as a reason for its restructuring. Hopefully no more than that, but I I kind of have a bad feeling that this is only the beginning for them. And I hope I hope that they get a chance to make another single player game again. I just Sure. Hmm. Sure, sure. There was WB, right? Yeah, WB. Uh, I think today I saw that they're they're trying to double down on uh, Hogwarts Legacy Two, because that was so profitable for them. So they've you know looking for ways to recoup costs from their their losses. I mean, obviously layoffs, not ideal. Um, but just funding a, another successful game uh, would would help them get some of that cash back. Indeed. And even just playing that beta, I I fucking enjoyed the hell out of those cutscenes. Like, uh, I want to see them make a single-player game again. I I know you weren't, but I I don't know. Uh, Obviously, I didn't play it that long either. I just played the beta. (laughs) Or whatever it was. Was it a beta? It was long is what it was. Yeah, yes. We played for a minute. We did, yeah. Uh, yeah, because that was the one that was a secret, and then they ended up saying, you you can talk about this. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, more layoffs here, Christian. Ballistic Moon has announced layoffs ahead of Until Dawn Remake's re-release, obviously re- releasing again. Uh, so the developer has acknowledged significant layoffs at the studio after several staff members announced their departure earlier in September. Uh, a LinkedIn post said that uh, from the studio said it was a profoundly sorry for the layoffs that appeared to affect at least 11 members of staff at the studio. Crazy that we're getting layoffs before the game is, is even out. <laughs> yeah, I, I wonder what kind of uh, what seniority they are, I suppose. Right. Uh, I know the reality of game development is like, when you're about to release a game, you don't need playtesters and people who are like, you know, contractors and stuff. You lay those people off. But it sounds like these are fully staffed. Right. Uh, excuse me. Like full, like actual full-time team members with like for like benefits and everything, and they have some seniority, uh, which uh, I guess would point to 
maybe lackluster pre-sales. Yeah. Which just sucks. I'm very unfortunate. 100%. Yeah. I, however, I also don't think an Until Dawn remake was Cur- yeah. uh, something that people really want, were itching for. Yeah. That should not have. Yeah, you're right. 100%. The, like, Sony, choose literally any, like, fucking Bloodborne remaster. I think people would kill news, over. You want You want some good news? The, the PC uh, fan-made version is going to be out in two weeks. There you go. Hell yeah. 4K 60 FPS Bloodborne, which is crazy that they got they got it together so fast. Crazy. Cease and desist them. No, I hope <laughs> they don't. But yeah. if they do, yeah, you better do something with that fucking IP. For sure. Tony. All right. Uh, moving on from there. Hit, uh, Hideaki. Fuck. Hideaki. Itsuno, the director of Dragon's Dogma 2 and Devil May Cry 5, has announced that he is leaving Capcom after 30 plus years. Legend. Holy shit. Long time. Rip. Sucks. Rest in peace. Wish him the best. Yes. Team of Five was fucking awesome. What a game that was. I never play it, re- played it, regrettably. <laughs> I... I I wanted to play it. It was in Game Pass, and then I just never played. <laughs> Fucking great. Uh, I love the Ninja Theory DMC that everyone hated. <laughs> I enjoyed it, too. Yeah. We know this. Yeah. All right. Moving on, Christian, the moment everyone's been waiting for. Our first teaser for the live-action Minecraft movie is here. We were so excited to see this trailer. Those still images looked god awful. Yeah. And then I saw that it was like just a teaser, not a trailer. And I was like, you know what? I have 45 seconds while I'm doing, like, getting water, <laughs> whatever the fuck, in, like, in between work stuff. And, uh, man, that, that sure does like it was, like, cooked underneath. Or how, how, how should I say this? This looks like C suites had their fucking hands all over this from start to finish. What are we doing? Yeah. What this looks like this looks terrible. Yeah. That shot of them walking into the like world and it's just like so obviously like just like one massive green room with like nothing for them to interact with. It just looks god awful. Yep. It sucks as people work so hard on, on making that come to life. Like again, the answer is like why not just do like some kind of animated film? That yes. would have have so much more heart. The costumes just look so bad. Uh, I, I, the act, the, the choice for actors is just weird. I guess. <laughs> I mean, you can really do anything because like these characters don't talk, but like it even still doesn't seem like the right fit. Uh, and there's a moment where like the first five seconds is like the like the the Nether portal, whatever, and that's animated, and like that looks like it's like oh hold on, and then it starts and it's like oh it's live action and it just looks just looks terrible. So many wrong choices here. Um, Mm-hmm. I don't expect this to be good, but who knows? Maybe a fucking a bunch of kids go out and see this in it, and it, and it makes a bunch of money, and Hollywood learns nothing from it. <laughs> what do I know? There is one guarantee that I'll make to you, Christian. This will make more than the Borderlands movie. <laughs> sure, yeah, <laughs> but well, it's a kids movie. Yes, exactly. Yeah, th- this does not look good. It, it's like you were saying it baffles me that they chose to make this live action it doesn't make sense at all for this to be live action it doesn't need to be live action it would have been like you said way more had way more heart way Mm. more fucking emotion of minecraft like it would have felt like a minecraft movie being an animated movie it does not feel like a minecraft movie looking at this trailer it looks like some weird conglomeration of the two like combining of the two and fucking jack black is in his back-to-back video game adaptation that's gonna be trash (laughs) that's not good who's the yeah uh i suppose it's paramount pictures they just did uh uh, a kids movie last year uh tmnt mutant mayhem Mm, uh a lot lot of spirit that one that one that one i think has has so much heart I, i i think yep Give it to Rogan's. studios like uh, give it to studios like that. I think that is uh, obviously I think influenced by by some kind of you know corporate whatever. Yeah, you know that's how that's how these movies work. But like, 
having people who care about about the IP to treat it with like a sense of care to like make something that's that's worth like oh this looks like they care about the Minecraft world and you know want to do something cool with it. Uh, give it to something like that. I, I don't know about this movie. <laughs> The fucking, you're totally. I, I'll say this. What? I was just gonna say you're totally right about the costumes. They look horrible. Like Jack Black, they look really bad. His yeah. look <laughs> so bad. God. Well, the co the costumes are bad on their own, but then you combine that with the like the backgrounds they're standing in, and yeah. it just looks like they're just like in two totally different things. Yeah insane all right our last quick bite christian star wars outlaws has seemingly dropped ubisoft stock price to a 10 year low fucking stockholders here we go uh analysts are attributing it to a poorer than expected start for star wars outlaws and a sharp decline in interest in x defiant so talked about it last week the game Outlaws doesn't have a lot of hype behind it, despite it being a good game. And X Defiant, I think, is going to continue to lose its momentum sure. as Call of Duty comes out this fall. So, Hope their respective audiences enjoy the game nonetheless. For I'll sure. leave it at that. For sure. All right, Christian. Into the fantasy draft check-in real quick here. We have... Yeah, <laughs> there's some huge changes here. Uh, the first change we have here, Gage has been on a spree. And Roe, also interesting, interesting. All right, so we'll start from the top here. Christian has acquired a counterpick of Hollow Knight Silk Song with a bid of $7. That game's coming out December 31st. Uh, the row for a second uh, on last week's pod, Ro was like, Oh, I have an idea for a counter pick. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, this man's just doing hollow Knight and hoping it doesn't come out all out bid him. Hence the $7 and not $5. But alas, he picked up a counter pick of a quiet place. The road ahead with $5 bid, which is the right call. I didn't even think about that. Did not even think about that. Yeah, I think that game's going to be under 70. I don't know what the fuck Gage was thinking picking that game up. That's a pretty good counter pick bit, yeah. Yeah. Although, Silk Song, if it doesn't come out, you're st you're at least zero. So the, the only place I see Silk Song, I should have waited longer. <laughs> uh, there's a chance we see it in, in Nintendo September Direct, their big Ooh. one. Where that like they show up, they could they probably talk about Switch Two, and that I think it you know. But if that's the case, Switch Two isn't even coming out till next year. I think they would want Silk Song out with something like that. That's true, unless they don't talk about the Switch Two. <laughs> and it's just, oh, man. <laughs> here's the scenario for you, Christian. A lot of games come out on a Tuesday. December thirty first is a Tuesday. <laughs> what would you do if it came out? <laughs> I'd eat the hot wings right right then and there. <laughs> Incredible. All right, uh, then Gage went on a fucking buying spree. He acquired Rift of the Necro Dancer for a bid of $5. He acquired Assassin's Creed Shadows with a bid of $5. He acquired Silent Hill 2 Remake with a bid of $6. And he dropped Light No Fire. Uh, that... I don't think Rift of the Necro Dancer will come out this year. Which oh, is, no. Uh... <laughs> Uh, 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 and in Light No Fire, yeah, I, I definitely didn't. That, that was already one of my counter picks. So I just have a free counter pick now. Is that how that works? Or no? Uh, yeah, if he dropped it, then I, yeah, I think. I think that's how that works. Okay. I don't know. Maybe not, though, because it hasn't given you zero points yet. Maybe it stays. Because mine, uh, on the ones that have been delayed, it has already given me zero points for them. So and Because mine's not technically delayed, it's just dropped, it's, uh, it still could right. Interesting. harm me if it does come out, or not harm me at all. That's true. Uh, 
All right, the three games. I think we had three games that we have updates on. Yeah. Squirrel with a gun. The biggest update here, Christian. Roe got has right now minus four from Squirrel with a gun. No way. Yes, he's at 66 with minus four points for Squirrel with a gun at the moment. That's big for us. That is That's huge. huge for us. Yep, that is huge. And then we also got, thankfully, oh, sorry, just two games. I thought it was three games. Uh, thankfully, Gage finally had a game release. Warhammer 40K Space Marine 2 got it is currently at an 85 which would be a pending 15 points it's not final yet but he's on the board it is so funny that you look at his like uh, sheet and all of his is his counterpick counterpick uh, the fucking <laughs> not releasing counterpick what is this flag we recently decided this uh this game is more than oh okay okay they switched it up yeah. anyway Interesting. This guy's, this guy's finally going to break the teens, huh? And you know what this means, Christian? It means that Roe is only ahead by two points on you. He's at 111 points. You're at 109. I'm at 106 right behind you. And then Gage is sitting at 17. <laughs> Oh my God, he still has a bunch of games not that have not come out yet, though. That's so. true. <laughs> he's, he's got a full a full sheet there. Yeah, uh, I'll say this, Dan. I'm hearing good news from industry friends. Astrobot, mm. goatee material. Really? Wow. Could be. I don't know. Could be huge for you. Might just be making that up. Might. You'll <laughs> never know. Maybe I'm just trying to intimidate you. That's possible, but I'm the two-time champ, so I can't be intimidated. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. All right, moving in to what you got for me. Daniel, what do you got for me? Of course, Black Ops 6 beta, we already talked about it. I also played Risk of Rain 2 with the boys. Yeah, We can talk about it. We can talk about when Gage is here. Okay, save okay. That, save that for when Gage I'll is save here. that. I'll save my thoughts. Yeah. People are clamoring for them. And then Fortnite, I played two matches with Glenn last night because he begged me to do it and we won the second match and we literally started on two opposite ends of the map and I was like Glenn I'm not fucking with you right now I'm gonna do my own thing we met in the middle and then we fucking won the match and I was like all right that's pretty cool that's yeah, fun that was fun uh, I haven't liked this season very much yeah the season they did with uh the Greek gods sorry yeah yeah the season they did with the Greek gods, and then they did a, an Avatar, the last Airbender collaboration with. That was a lot of fun, and then everything else has just been miss miss. It's fair. Marvel one has been kind of uninspired. Map design does not inspire a lot of me either. I was I was literally telling Ga or uh, Glenn, I was like, "Why the fuck I need to pick up three items and then I'm War Machine?" Apparently, I'm like, "I don't want that. Just fucking put these down." <laughs> Stupid. They nerfed all the those mythics because when the game first came out, like the meta was just the War Machine's arsenal and the fucking Captain America's shield. You couldn't do anything. Damn. Not do anything. Yeah, that's annoying. Christian, what you got for me? Oh, man. Uh, I mean, I'll say Risk of Rain 2 for whenever Gage is here. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Although it is peak. Might be peak. Uh... I played the the Escape Academy game uh, with Natalie. Uh, it was so much fun, dude. Oh, yeah. Like a short experience. Uh, even okay. The the coolest part about this game was, I think, the pitch for it. The way it teaches you before you even get to the main menu of the game, it just drops you into an escape room, and you have to figure out the mechanics like in this like small environment. It's a pretty easy puzzle to figure out. Once you do, you get to finally see the main menu. And then the official game starts. Like, that was really neat. And then the game starts, and it's, um, you're like this student. It's kind of dumb. It's a little corny, cheesy, I should say. Uh, there's like a, uh, there's a school for escape, uh, escape, escape artists. Like, this is what they do, is like make escape rooms and stuff. And so they study this, and you find the school. Uh, and so you uh, do a test to get enrolled. Um, and then you're enrolled, and stuff happens after. But it's, it's such a cute game. Uh, a lot of fun with like it's it's meant for two people 
um you can hit r2 to see what their screen is so if like it they if you're doing a puzzle where like they have to look at something and i have to input the the thing i can look at their screen whatever and uh very doable i think you engage would, would like have a lot of fun with this for like an hour if you tried it out it's also on game pass oh, yeah. um i wanted to mention one more i think let me let me confirm this confirm Conf nah that's it oh okay that's it yeah black ops 6 fortnite risk of rain escape academy hell yeah it's a good good selection yeah not bad not bad that was a tight one hour no i'm just kidding that wasn't a tight one hour <laughs> It's like one fifteen. It's like one fifteen. Yeah, that was all right. That was all right. All right. Anything else before we close out the show, Christian? Set. Set. So we made it. Thank you again to everyone joining us live on YouTube and Twitch, as well as podcast services everywhere, including Apple Podcasts, YouTube Music, Spotify, and everywhere else you get your podcasts. Thank you, Christian. Christian, Row and Gage will return next week. I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. I am Daniel, and this has been Podcast PXN, and we are out. Much love, and keep on gaming.